No, so I think the following things are clear, right? So the Aryan invasion theory has a rather colonial, white-centric origin which you took us through. Then we have the Aryan migration racist. theory. Racist. Use involved the into... word racist. Yes, I'll use the word racist. Yes. Then you have the Aryan uh, migration theory, which has a rather dubious uh, origin point, uh, Mr. Hitler, and of course, <laughs> the evidence doesn't co- collaborate uh, corroborate that as well. So, what I want to get into now is, and which is why I think, which is why I think the genetic evidence was a good part of it, is based on the scientific method or whatever is the accepted means of uh, of of figuring out the best picture of history used today. What is the current accepted view? Yeah. What is genetic evidence? Say you mentioned the you mentioned the archaeological evidence at length. Uh, I'm curious now also about the genetic evidence, particularly in the makeup of uh, Indians today. Yes. So that's uh, an uh, amazing area of study which has uh, come into prominence for the whole question of Aryan invasion or not and migration in the past say I would say 20-25 years. Many people have uh, used it you know because when genetics came up and uh, paleogenetics came up then it was uh, obviously a good source of evidence and our poor Aryan invasion theorists were very sad because they had not got uh, any traction anywhere so they jumped on to genetics. Now for this we have to know uh, something, we have to know a few terms, just a few terms. So what is a... I'll try my best to understand. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) I am sure you'll understand. So what is a haplogroup? So a haplogroup Mm -hmm. is a group of people who share a common ancestor with certain okay. specific genetic mutations so it is like a huge extended family okay and there are two types of haplogroups one is with a y chromosome male ones and mm-hmm. the other with the empty dna which is the female ones empty dna so uh, we have a plethora of these these are generally given you know uh, a b c d x y z r kind of names are they are numerical alphanumeric kind of codes because there are so many what we want to know is about the r1a1a this haplogroup is the well smashing success of genetics and mutation and and uh, succeeding across millennia it has the most number of people today almost a billion people in the world are R1A1A. Okay. This R1A1A, why are we interested in it for our current topic today? Because it represents Indo-European people and it represents that group which is being tracked to see did it come from the steppes or from Anatolia to India or as uh, somebody called Edwin Bryant said, is there actually an out of India solution? Is it that it is all these people who went out from here and actually spread their genes and their culture across the intervening spaces and also in Europe? So, so the- just to just, yeah, so just to pause there for a second because just to absorb. So what we are saying is, could you say it again? R one A one A. Is that yes. right? That's right. Okay, so R1A1A, is so two things that I took away from what you said. One is, so there is a shared haplogroup between Indians and Europeans. I'm using both terms yes. very loosely. Yes. Uh, you can probably specify what it is. No, and no, probably I think, why you know, you speci- it's better to keep it loose for the moment. Yes, okay. For our understanding. Okay. And you said it's almost a billion people, which seems to imply Today. to me that it's not all of all of India, because India is 1.5 billion by itself. So, so not all Indians have this. No, 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 no. no. Okay. 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 So maybe that would be. Go ahead. I just wanted to confirm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know that uh, uh, in Africa is the most genetic diversity in the entire world. Yes. Yes. India is second. India is second in terms of genetic diversity, and diversity means origin point. The further you Mm. move away from diversity, the further you are moving away from origin point. Yeah. So the more the diversity, the greater is the origin point. Now, yeah. we have two streams of thought today in terms of genetic uh, evidence. One of them insists on that same timeline that we have seen for Aryan invasion 
Anatolia steps. We've seen it for linguistics also. That same, same, same kind of uh, argument. A very famous study was that of David Reich in 2018. And uh, so all the invasionists in India were like, okay, now we got it. Now we won. Because it's David Reich's theory has solved everything. If that's a good question, we will just look at whether it did or not. On the other hand, are uh, people like Neeraj Rai and there are many others. He collaborates with a few labs in Italy and uh, his um, findings are very, very scientific. So he is not into this kind of politics about proving this theory or disproving that theory. He is just a scientist. Uh, what uh, Neeraj Rai says is that the R1A1 parent haplogroup because these haplogroups also give rise to other haplogroups which is why you have R1A1 and then you can add A, B, C, lots of things. I see. Yeah. So R yeah. will be the original haplogroup. Then another subset will so be R1, so then R1A, yeah. then R1A1. So what he says is that the oldest examples of R1A, okay, not R1A1, but R1A. Even A, before that. Even yeah. before yeah. that. They belong to India. They have been found in India almost 16,000 years ago. So this shoots the Aryan migration invasion theory to wits. Because it shouldn't have been here. If they are Indo-Europeans, if these are Indo-European genetics, why are they in, they in India before 1500 BCE? There is no answer to that. Except an answer which says that no, the Aryan invasion theory was a, uh, well, it was an invention. So to what me, that sounds right? like a smoking smoking gun. Why is it even disputed if the if the earlier haplogroup is... I, I'll tell you why. See, because uh, many and most of these studies, there were earlier studies in which the they proved that R1A1 originated in Europe. This was done 15 years ago. There was a study that R1A1 was originally from Europe. Now, in this database, they did not bother to include too many Indians. So, not sample more size. than 50 to 100, yes, not more than 50 mm. to 100 samples were taken from India. So that is not only that, they also took very selective samples. They are only interested in two types of samples from India. One is Brahmins and the other is tribals. They don't want to take any other samples from India. So you see in sample selection, in sample size, there is already a lot of bias. Again, in the studies which purport to prove that exactly within that period that we are talking of 1500 and 100 years plus minus these genes were introduced into India some studies have been published not only are they uh, you know kind of fly by night studies and published in very vague kind of publications there are problems with sample size then uh, there are problems with uh, assumptions so what are they assuming they are assuming say for example that uh, 29 years means one generation and then they do their studies on the basis of this. Suppose you, uh, with 29 years as one generation, they have arrived at their conclusion that this gene came into India around the time that they want. But suppose you change that to 32, the time changes completely, change that to 30, the time period changes completely. So in all these studies, the sample sizes as well as the sample selection, the assumptions are not standing up to scrutiny. What Neeraj Rai is doing is a work in progress in many ways because he takes modern DNA as well as ancient DNA. Remember I told you that some of it is becoming available to him. So he takes both and yeah. then he tries to understand what is the current situation of R1A1 genes here and what is the ancient situation so the biggest hit against the Aryan invasion theory is that uh, the R1A1 is so diverse and uh, so widespread in India 
that it cannot be explained through an injection via some mild migrations in 1500 BCE. And it has uh, existed for a very, very long time. Uh, I also want to say, what does he say? That R1A1, they have picked up the R1A1 and uh, its phylogeny has been completely delineated. There are 50 mutations and downstream markers of where these went, these R1A1 genes. So, Kerala, Karnataka, Central India, all of tribal population. The diversity of R1A1 in these populations is double that found in European populations. And remember, diversity leads to origin. origin point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, what does this make you think? Obviously, that if diversity is so much less amongst Europeans and so much more in Central India, in the tribal populations of India, in fact, across 30% of Indian population, then it is obvious that we have to look somewhere else that rather than the Anatolian theory or the step theory for the origin of R1A1. There's another thing which I want to tell you. There is a lot of step related ancestry in India. There is a lot of Central Asian ancestry in India today. Modern genetics. Hmm. Why? And to what period can we see it? Most of it has come in around the 1st or 2nd century of the common era. The earliest few little bits that you can find are in the 2nd or the 3rd century before the common era, but the whole big chunk dates from the 1st to the 2nd century AD. Now, if we look at our history as we see it, that was the time after the collapse of the Mauryans, after the collapse of the Sunghas and the Satkarnis, there was a huge influx from Central Asia. You had a huge Kushan empire. The Kushans were, are uh, a very, very uh, ideal Indian dynasty. They came in, they completely integrated with local customs. They were some of the biggest Shaivites and Buddhists that you will find across history. We have beautiful compositions, religious compositions, and uh, they, were, uh, they were a very ideal kind of... Uh, but where was the capital of the Kushan Empire? Was it in China or India? The, uh, no, no, it was in India. Oh. And most of the remains have been found in India. Okay, so it's an Indian empire which, okay, maybe this is all semantics, I don't know. But so was it a, it's a bit no, of a... No, it is semantics yeah. because, yeah, yeah it is a semantics because you cannot say that it's an Indian who went and yeah. brought in that part of China because it was the other way around. Okay, okay, so that's important. But, but they chose to base themselves, yeah. they chose to base themselves in Northern India. Interesting. And uh, we have... So many inscriptions and so many compositions and so much cultural material from them. However, you know, we can do another can, podcast yeah, on the we'll Kushans. Swivel the back to the, old, was, yeah, to the original yeah, topic, yes. Yeah. The point here was that we can see from what we know of our history that around the 2nd, 3rd century BCE also, remember the Mauryans came into contact with the Greeks. Yes. And they came into contact with the Seleucids. And there was a huge amount of coming and going. Megasthenes, for example, who wrote the Indica. So, there was a huge amount of coming and going. There were Greek settlements in Gujarat. So, it's not surprising that you find the R1A1 or the steppe ancestry marker. Not the R1A1, the steppe ancestry yeah. marker. Not surprising that you find it. Because there were a lot of people who came in from Europe at the time and from Central Asia. So, this is uh, all that is coming up in the new work which is being done by Dr. Neeraj Rai. What some people are saying is that we should go to the parent haplogroup of R1A1 which is called R1B and see what was the ancestry, what were the markers of R1B. So, perhaps in the future we will be able to see a bit of that. That work has not been done so yet. So, currently then... Yeah, uh, no, it's being done. It's so being done right expect now. expect the results in one year or two years. Watch the full episode on the origin of the Aryan invasion theory and the latest evidence disproving it on the WAC Indian History Podcast. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, share. We would love to have your support.